No matter where you look, in history, society, folklore or mythology, the rat carries with it the stain of darkness. It's a product of its nature. The rat skulks and scurries, it carries an array of diseases, feeds on carrion, trash, and will even feed on helpless humans if the opportunity should arise. Their very natures can inspire nightmares and their myths and folklore follow the same trend. In Greek mythology, the rat is associated with Aramanias, a dark god tainted by evil. In folklore, the rat is a combination of misery and bad luck and serves as a warning bell for disasters. In history, it was once believed to be the single cause of the most vicious disease to tear across Europe, the Black Death, and due to its tendency to swarm and skulk in the depths of sewers to gnaw, gnash, squeak and bite, in society it is feared and reviled for its very nature. Superstitions range from the age-old beliefs from Europe that if a rat should jump off a ship, the ship was doomed to sink. If a rat gnaws your clothes, you will die. A great increase in the rat population is an omen of impending war. See a rat in a mine in a cave-in is imminent. And if rats abandon your house, be sure to heed the warning and leave quickly, as a fire is most likely about to consume it. For all intents and purposes, the rat can be seen as the harbinger of misery. Even a group of rats is called a mischief. But is this a fair assessment? Do rats always carry this stain of desolation? Or is there more to their folklore or myths than just death and disease? Folklore tends to hold the most stories depicting rats. In Korea, they say if you clip your toenails at night, the rat will come to steal your soul by changing into you and then killing you to take it. In Europe, the witch could send rats and mice out to destroy their enemies' crops or homes. And in Egypt, the rat symbolized destruction. But one of the most bizarre folklores involving the rat must be the infamous Rat King. The Rat King is essentially a group of rats whose tails have been knotted together. Their numbers can range from 3 to 30. Rat Kings are usually native to Germany and consist mostly of black rats or Rattus Rattus, the one once believed to be the carrier of the Black Death. In Germany, they are called Rattekönig, which denotes the folkloric Rat King and a Rat King, a poor monarch or ruler. Although many believe them to be myth or simple folklore, there have been many discoveries of Rat Kings throughout history and Europe. The largest of these was by Müller Steinbrück, who discovered the creature in Germany in 1828. He found a clump of 32 rodents in his chimney, their tails entangled and knotted. The anomaly has been preserved and kept. In 1894, another one was found also in Germany, this time in Delafield. It contained 10 frozen rats, their legs were gnawed and teeth marks were all over their bodies. In France, they found one in 1899, seven entangled rats on the border of France. They were all subsequently killed and kept as a curiosity. Estonia and Saru, there was a group of 16 rats discovered in 2005. It said nine were still alive and their tails had been frozen together. After they were killed, they were preserved in alcohol and taken to the Natural History Museum. Estonia has also seen an 18-count rat king with all rats still alive. There are over 60 recorded incidents of rat king sightings across Europe, but one question many would ask is, why doesn't the rat king starve? These rats can't find their own food, as any movement would clearly hinder them. And it is certainly easy to get caught and killed like this. The folklore goes that the rat king's mind is connected through the tails giving them a hive mind thinking. They essentially think as one, and thus have no problem moving from one place to another. Furthermore, the Rat King can also use this ability on other rats, controlling them and using their eyes and bodies to search for and bring back food to the Rat King who can't move. Another story goes that the Rat King is in fact a different rat who sits upon the knot, waiting for his underlings to bring him food, which grabs the essence of the original meaning of the word Rattekönig, a leecher, a person who lives off the work of others. The Rat King also, like all rats, is an omen of disease, particularly plague, which is not an unreasonable assumption. They were, according to folklore, formed when there were too many rats and could very well spell an outbreak of disease. Whether an outbreak did follow a Rat King's discovery is not mentioned in either history or folktales. As to how the phenomenon happens, there is essentially only one accepted theory. The rats' tails are glued together by some or other sticky substance in winter when they are all usually huddling for warmth. As they struggle to escape, their tails become more and more entangled. Although this is the accepted theory, many historians feel that all the rat kings are the product of hoaxes. That people would deliberately stick these tails together and then show it as some sort of freak show. However, there have been cases of this happening in the wild, albeit not with rats. The Squirrel King, although not as well known as the Rat King, occurs in the wild and a few people have even taken pictures and recorded video of the phenomenon. So to make the leap from squirrel to rat is not too nutty. 
As for how the rats could have survived is quite simple. Rats have been observed helping each other. It is very possible that rats might bring food for their helpless companions and perhaps in time the sticky substance is either groomed clean or tails are chewed through, releasing them from their prisons. But, however they are formed, the Rat King carries with it that same old stain of disease, which makes sense. Most rats were believed to be the carriers of the plague and as such, a ball of fur and squeaks crawling up from the gutters would very well scare the heebie-jeebies out of anyone and of course spur on the horror stories. A far more well-known legend or folktale concerning rats is the legend of the Pied Piper. The story goes that in the small town of Hamlin, also in Germany, there was once a terrible plague of rats. Desperate to rid themselves of the vermin, they called in the Pied Piper, a well-known rat catcher in the region. In the village, he played his flute masterfully and guided the rats down the road and to a cliff. The rats all tumbled over and into the ocean where they all drowned. The town was grateful for the help but decided not to pay the piper. Furious at the slight, the piper retaliated by using his pipe to lead the children out of town to an unknown location. No one ever saw the children again. There have been many debates by historians for both the possibility and impossibility of this story. But whether it is true or not, the role of the rat in this case is a simple bystander. Although certainly starting out as a plague, the rat is rather here as simply an excuse to have the true villain, the piper, appear to lead the children away. But it does bring into focus a rather interesting trend with the rat's folklore. Despite these bad luck harbingers, they are in essence only responding from experience, not necessarily by evil by nature, rather evil by association. They forewarn and so help us in their own way. And not all rat folklore and legends need be dipped in all black. In the case of Bishop Hatto, the story is far more vengeful and even a touch cathartic. The story goes that in Germany, of course, there was once a terrible bishop, who abused his power ostensibly. He set outrageous taxes, caused horrible poverty, and when a famine struck, he took all the grain for himself and locked it up in his tower. One day, he invited the peasant folk to his barn, promising them food. When they arrived, he made sure they were all inside, upon which he locked the door behind them and set the barn on fire. In this way, he believed he was helping the famine by eliminating some of the hungry mouths in the village. The next week, he woke to a strange sound in his stores. Hundreds of rats were eating his food, starving and ravenous, they were unstoppable. And when the food was done, they turned their hunger on him. The bishop ran up the tower, the rats on his heels, and when he reached the top, he knelt and prayed for delivery. The rats chewed through the door and ate him alive. It is believed the rats were the souls of the people who had been burned alive, and they had returned from the dead to have their vengeance. An old story goes that rats are the souls of the dead and the reason they know so much about the world and impending danger is simply put, they have experience and wish to help us before disaster strikes. And then we have the very lesser known folklore, the Queen Rat of London. The story was told by Jerry Sweetley on his deathbed in 1890 when he claimed he met the Queen of Rats in the sewers of London. He'd been a tosher, a man who spent his life searching the sewers for jewelry to sell. According to the myth, the Queen of Rats watched the men and if she took a fancy in one, she would reveal herself as a beautiful woman and lead him through the sewers to a safe little corner. If the encounter was pleasant enough, the Queen bestowed wonderful luck upon him. But if he revealed her to anyone, his luck would change and he would possibly drown or die some other horrible death. What is distinct is that when you had an encounter with the Queen, your children would bear the mark with one blue eye and one grey. This was the surest sign that you'd been with the Queen Rat and all your descendants would bear the same mark, which was certainly the case for Sweetly. There isn't a lot of goodness in the rat myths and folklore. I suppose most of this has to do with their natures as it is with their looks. Many people find their tails creepy, their beady eyes disturbing and their squeaks alarming. Folklore and myth are very emotionally driven and rats tend to evoke the emotion of fear. But that doesn't mean that all they represent is darkness. A speckle of kinder myths peppers the dreariness with flecks of goodness. In China, for example, the rat is part of their zodiac, believed to be a holy creature by some, adaptable, quick and intelligent. They also believe the rat gave the gift of rice to the people. A wonderful gift, to be sure. In Hindu mythology, one of their gods, Ganesha, rides a rat as a mount, belying the idea that the rat is far more than just a creature of disease and plagues. Furthermore, in India, we have the Karnimata temple, where rats are considered holy and may run around freely. Although the Egyptians see the rat as a creature of destruction, they also see them as creatures of prosperity, for when the rat is plentiful, so are they, and also of wisdom, because the rat will always pick the better slice of bread. 
In Japan, Daikoku is the patron of farmers, also the protector of the soil and the god of wealth. His emblem and companion is of course the rat, and his name literally translates to good measure of rice. The rat can also be a symbol of happiness. Instead of seeing the rat's abundance as a plague or problem, they instead associated the creature with abundance and prosperity, which is very logical, as where there is food, a rat is sure to follow. It is interesting to see how different cultures depicted the rat, especially concerning the vast difference between Western and Eastern beliefs. But in some way, even the Toshas could see a glimmer of hope in all that dark of the sewers by perhaps fabricating it in the form of a rat queen. And as shown with the bishop, rats could avenge the dead in their own unique, if not horrific way. Despite our association with the rat as unclean, filthy and diseased, some goodness has come from their stories. And not everything about rats is inherently dark. Rats are in nature, kind to one another, very social. They can laugh, they make excellent pets, they can even be used in law enforcement to sniff out gunpowder or in the military to find landmines. The rat's twisted crown might forever mark its kingdom as one inspired by darkness, but there will always be people who can look beyond their reputations and see something more.